Now if you have a shape like a square or a rectangle, we can work out the area by looking at the base and the height and multiplying the two things together. Now if these are in centimetres, that's going to give us an area in square centimetres. But sometimes we also want to look at the area of a triangle, and this is going to be half times the base times the height, because this triangle is going to be equal to half the area of this rectangle. And that's something which is really important to remember. And that's the kind of basic math skills that you need to be able to apply to various different problems in physics, especially when it comes to looking at the area under a line on a graph. For example, here we have a line, and we're going to look at the area under that line, and we can see that it goes from 0 to 10 along this way, and it goes from 0 to 7 up there. So if we wanted to look at the area, it's going to be equal to a half times the base times the height. And here, the base of this triangle is 10 long, and the height is 7. So that's 7. So this is going to be equal to a half times 70, which equals 35. So the area under this line on this graph is equal to 35. Now in physics, the areas that we need to calculate tend not to be just simple triangles. We might have an area like this. But again, we can just split this down into two smaller shapes. So what we have in the top part is a triangle and a rectangle down here. So let's call that area A and that area B. Now to work out the area of area A, that's just going to be equal to a half of the base times the height, because it's a triangle, so that's 10. And the height, it goes up to 7, but it starts at 3. So the height of this triangle is equal to 4. And therefore that's equal to a half times 40, which is 20. The area for B, well this is now a simple rectangle. The base is 10, the height is 3, and that's equal to 30. So the total area for this is going to be equal to 20 plus 30, which equals 50. And finally, we have a more complicated example where we've got a line that goes up, goes down, and then goes along. This one here has V, so the speed or velocity in meters per second, and the time in seconds. Now to work out the area underneath the line on this graph, I'm just going to split it down into four simpler shapes. Now I've labelled them A, B, C and D, and that means when I actually calculate my area, I'm going to do it for each shape in turn. So area A is a triangle, so it's a half base times height. The base goes from 0 to 5, and the height goes from 3 to 7. And 7 take away 3 is just equal to 4. And so 5 times 4 is 20, half of that is just equal to 10. For area B, it's a rectangle. The base is 5. The height is 3, so 3 times 5 is equal to 15. Area C is another triangle, and here the base goes from 5 to 7. So a half of the base is a half times 2, multiplied by the height. Now the height goes up to 7, but it starts at 1. So 7 take away 1 is 6. 2 times 6 is 12, so half of 12 is equal to 6. And finally, area D is another rectangle, uh, the base goes from 5 to 10, so that's 5, multiplied by the height of 1, which equals 5. So the total area, in this case, is equal to 10 plus 15 plus 6 plus 5, which is equal to 36. And the reason we often want to look at the area underneath the line on the graph is because this, this is really important, especially for velocity time graphs, where actually the area means a kind of some kind of physical constant. Now for a velocity time graph, the gradient of the line might be equal to the acceleration, but the area under that line is equal to the distance travelled. So here, because we've got a velocity or a speed in metres per second and a time in seconds, this means our distance is going to be in metres. So the reason that it's really important to, to know how to calculate the area under the line on the graph is because in physics it actually means something. And often you'll be asked to do this with velocity time graphs, and therefore the area is equal to 36 metres.